Today is Wild Wednesday and it's time for another primitive technology project. In this video, we're gonna recreate a knife that was used by people in Texas over 2,500 years ago. We have all the tools and supplies we need to make this knife. If you're new to my channel, you might think I only post videos on mouse traps. Every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, I feature a different rodent trap video. Those are very popular. But for the past seven years, I've been uploading videos, really teaching people about past civilizations through artifacts that we recreate really learning how they lived in the Stone Age. Subjects such as hunting, flint napping, making bows and arrows. Really the inspiration for these videos was going through the archeological record and finding clues to how people lived in the past. Now the inspiration for this video came from a picture I saw in this book. It's the 14th edition of the official Overstreet Indian Arrowheads identification and price guide. If you're interested in past cultures, stone points, this is the best resource I've ever found. It contains thousands and thousands of pictures of arrowheads from all around the country. I have so many pages in here bookmarked and dog-eared on projects I wanna recreate. And the first one we're gonna do is from the front. On page 37, there's an article titled A Visit to the Museum of Native American History in Bentonsville, Arkansas. And if you flip the page, you'll see this. It says, Shumla knife. It's a deer lay bone knife. I'll do a close up so you can see this. This is what we're gonna recreate. So here's our project. It's gonna be a deer leg bone knife with a stone point tied on with sinew and asphaltum gives a little history. Now I'll put a link in the description below so you can get the full history of this knife, but it's so rare to find a point connected to an arrow or knife handle. That's why I selected this. It's a rare find. It was found in a rock bluff where it didn't decompose and that's why I want to feature it. So I'll show you all the supplies and then we'll get started making it. So the first thing we'll need is a handle for the knife. The handle was made out of a deer leg bone. This is from a white-tailed deer that I harvested in Idaho last year. The next thing we need is something to attach the handle to the point. To do that, we're gonna do a wrapping of sinew. This is back sinew from an elk that I harvested last fall with my boys. We love eating the meat and also love using the parts of the animal for projects like this. And after the point was attached to the handle with a sinew wrapping, it was covered with an asphaltum glue. This is asphaltum, just think of asphalt. It's a primitive glue similar to pine pitch glue. So that's what we're gonna use on this knife. And the final thing we need for this project is the point. We're gonna flint nap that out of chert. This came out of Texas. And to do that, I have antler billets and hammer stones and antler tine and bone pressure flakers. So let's go start making this knife. Now through a CT scan, they were able to tell what type of point was on this knife. They couldn't tell right away because the base was covered up with asphaltum and a sinew wrapping. And if you saw this point laying on the ground, you might think it was an arrowhead or maybe a projectile point such as atlatl dart. And it might have been and recycled into a knife or might have just been made for a knife. Now technically this is a dagger because it has two cutting edges and knives only have one. I've been corrected by YouTube viewers in the past on that. But for this video I'm just going to call it a knife. Now it was determined to be a shumla. A shumla is a small to medium triangular basal notch point. That just means it's triangle in shape and has notches up from the base. It has a random flaking pattern. We can do random. And the shoulders have a strong barb that commonly extend all the way to the base. So they don't have to come all the way down. And with the original one, it was broken off, but oftentimes they do. And the base is straight to slightly convex. So this is about the size and shape we wanna make with our point. So let's take this rock here and flint nap it into a point. Now you notice this chert from Texas is covered in a white chalky exterior. We wanna remove that so we can see the gray material inside. And to remove it, we're gonna strike flakes off the surface using a hammer stone and an antler billet. To do that, we study the shape of the rock and then strike it to send those flakes off. You can see how with each strike we're taking off material. We'll just keep working it until we have a biface. I've completed our knife blade. We're now ready to set it aside and work on our deer leg bone handle. Our deer leg bone is much longer than it needs to be. I'm gonna fit it to my hand, then cut it off right about here and form a notch that fits the blade. To cut the bone, I'm gonna grind a groove with one of the flint flakes and then strike it with a rock. We have a groove all the way around the bone. Let's strike it with a stone and see if we get a clean break. Hey, that isn't bad. 
The next thing we need to do is grind the end smooth and then cut in our notches to fit the blade. This will be a slow and tedious process. I'll come back when the handle's all shaped. I've been shaping our deer leg bone handle. I smoothed all the rough edges on a piece of pumice and then carved a notch on the end with a flint flake. It now fits our blade and we're ready to haft it. To do that, we're gonna use the sinew and asphaltum. The sinew needs to be soaked. First, we need to tease out these long strands. Then I'm gonna put them in the creek, get them wet, then we can wrap it and as it dries, it will shrink. I have a fire going in the back as well. That's to process our asphaltum. So first we'll soak our sinew, then we'll grind the asphaltum up into a powder and then heat it up to make some glue. As I grind up this asphaltum, I'm getting the same smell as when you drive by a construction site and they're paving a new road. As I heat the powder up over the fire, it makes a nice sticky glue. When it's warm, it's a little bit flexible, but when it dries, it becomes incredibly hard. This is just perfect to haft our knife, so I'm gonna get a little bit more, put it in the bone handle, and set the blade. We have our blade set into the handle with asphaltum. Now I'm gonna wrap it with the sinew. That sinew wrapping will help hold the blade to the handle, but if it gets wet, it will become soft. To protect it, we're gonna let it dry a little while, then cover it up with a second layer of asphaltum. And here's our completed deer leg bone Shumla knife. It's a pretty close replica to a style knife that was used in parts of Texas over 2,500 years ago. It's amazing the original knife survived all that time in the Rock Bluff. If you want to learn more about this knife, I'll put a link in the description below. I'll also put a playlist of other primitive tools and weapons I've recreated. Make sure you check in next Wednesday for another flint napping project.